M0FXB Open Source SDR Lab have released a new version of the Hack RF1 Porter Pack. The new version is H4M, and we're going to go through the improvements. Now, possibly you've never heard of a Hack RF device. It is basically an SDR board, and you'll, you can just about see the board underneath here. I'll show you a, a photograph of what that board looks like. Here's the H4M board. So it's an SDR receiver and transceiver that fits underneath yeah, this device. And this is this screen that you're seeing on the front here is actually and on the right hand side of my video is actually called the Porter Pack. So it's it's what before you would connect the, the board that you're seeing to the left of me to your PC. And then it's like an SDR receiver, a bit like a dongle that you would normally get. And it receives from one megahertz to six gigahertz. Uh, and so it's a real hacker's delight, really. And it can even receive APRS, POCSAC messages. It can, you know, if you know what you're doing, it can read keys. It's, it's a real radio device um, hobbyist device it's the transmit power is you know is milliwatts so they brought out the h2m uh, not that long ago and you got it with this software called mayhem now mayhem are writing basically fan not fancy that's the wrong word very good uh, firmware stroke software where you end up with all these different apps and again you can see them on the screen here and i just read a couple uh, replay scanner looking glass Utilities debug, debug, hack RF. And on this model, um, cool, just, I'm, I, I've made so many videos on this that um, I don't want to go through them all now. I just want to explain the difference between the H2M and 4M. Uh, but you can, believe it or not, use this as a walkie talkie. You can. It's got maps. You can uh, track the aircraft flying over with maps. There's a whole section on there for just receive, which is the one I tend to use. And the two, the H2M model had these like little buttons here. The 4M, you can see it's just got one bigger button uh, on the right there, but you toggle it. So you click it and you get used to it the way that works. So on my screen here, again, I'll read some of the things. It says ADS slash B, ATS for boats, APRS. Um, Bluetooth, it can read Bluetooth, it can read your Bluetooth, ERT meter level, POCSAG, radio, radios, NDE, beacon search, it, it can play, it can actually play games, it can play computer games as well, so um, let's see if I can get it to do one of them, and to load the firmware you just, I'm trying to see if I can find the games on here, but to load the firmware, once you've initially put your SD card in, okay, then you, you put this file on there and then you go into the settings here and you load up the firmware. Once you've done that once, then you literally just plug it into your PC using the cable. Now the new H4M has got USB, USB uh, C. The older one had micro USB, but that's not really a problem because I just use a two pound adapter anyway. Uh, but of course, we've got the H4M on way. Looking forward to, to tinkering with that. So just, you know, the basics are that the bottom bit is the actual, what does all the work, really. That's the radio module. Let's call it SDR radio. And you can add a built-in speaker. There is already a built-in microphone on these. Uh, there is, a, with the new model, I know we've got a, a 3.5 jack in the bottom of the H2M. With the new model, it auto-switches before you had to go into the settings and tell it, because it is it is quite menu-driven, and you're going up and down on this device and going backwards and forwards and selecting everything. So let's just quickly go through the list there. But the... The case you don't actually have to have, even the sort of styling where it all says mayhem and all that, very stylish, you don't actually need that. The main point of the front end with the nice the nice screen, looks about 3.5 inch to me, is that you, you're independent from your PC. You don't have to connect the board to your PC anymore. You can completely control it independently. You've got antenna connections as well here, and then there's a couple more connectors here at the bottom so it becomes an independent portable unit and with the right antenna you can receive honestly you can receive amazing stuff with this um, uh, and if you go into transmit mode um, you can actually transmit so you've got to be careful so let's look at the new changes 
I mean, visually it looks nearly the same, but the main wheel has changed for control that you're seeing. I'll see if I can circle it. No, I can't circle it. Just on the far right of me. The list that, and the name of the company that have made this are called Open Source lab.com they sell it but they also provide links from aliexpress it's around 150 pounds they've now got a dedicated power off switch uh which means you don't get that sort of they call it phantom draining i find that even with my two version i just yeah you know, well i was holding i didn't have a big problem with the power draining i could not use it for months and it would still have quite a lot of power in it but anyway that's they've added a physical switch on top there and uh, you can see it on top, a little black slider that, that allows you to completely disconnect the battery. They've got new advanced battery management IC and battery display. So, you know, it's cleverer at making sure it gets the best out of that battery. And it's got, there's more settings that you can select to, to help you, you know, set those settings as you need them. Uh, it says here, matte screen can help you see the context, context so yeah, better visual, uh, better screen basically 360 degree knob we've talked about that now a big one is the gpio port now this is a hobby thing because we don't have a gpio port that connects so imagine that the bottom board is a bit like a raspberry pi let's say and that's just a very loose example well raspberry pis have a gpio port if i just grab one of my pies here that's a gpio port there that's your gpio pins okay and you can connect things to it which is They've now added their own version of that. It says yeah, the new generation H4M adds GPO port so that users can make their own accessories for H4M, just like the Flipper Zero. I've not used the Flipper Zero. I've seen the Flipper Zero. I think it's a smaller version of this, very customizable. So that's you know that's I know that's welcomed by the community that are you know are, that are heavily into you know the Hack RF hobby system yeah um improved charge speeds built-in microphone with a switch to toggle so it says that it, when you connect your headphones or or you know if you put an external mic or an internal mic you can switch between the two and then you know when you're using certain applications that you've done this uh, and that's what it says so that's the main thing so i would say to me it's a massive massive although i'm seeing that people are saying that it's a massive change i would say it's a welcome change um, for definite. If you've still got your H2M, you've still got this amazing device that will keep you, if you really, you do need to learn the different functions and the best way is to watch all the videos and just try to watch one at a time where, you know, like I'll try and do a video where it's just a walkie talkie or just decoding POXAC messages or just decoding APRS. You know, try and focus it down because you can get completely blown away by this and then and then playing games like Pac-Man and you know, you can look at whether whether beacons because it covers one megahertz to six meg six gigahertz and the porter pack with the mayhem software uh, and I'll just quickly show you that what, what that mayhem download looks like. Um this this it's it's just you get a lot for your money you can buy this individually you don't have to buy the h4m complete kit 160 pound i think it is uh, you can actually buy uh, the base model and the top model separate so you may already have the base model and a case i've got a spare metal case here that i haven't even used yet um but obviously the different cases uh because of the the knob has changed then you're going to need the case for the h4m doesn't mean i'm still i still say don't throw away your h2m and don't think just because you've got the h2m and they've brought out the h4m you need to just forget about the h2m and get the h4m so they're both still really good i'll put these links in the description as well so on the left you've got the the mayhem and it's hackrf.app and you basically connect your device yeah connect it it knows it's been connected and then you can update your device and it, it show if you want the SD card image, go to the right hand link here, which is GitHub, and scroll down and go to latest releases. You just click here, like so, and it will give you the option to download the one that you need. I'm not going to do that now. Once you've got that on your SD card, pop it in and then you can update by going into utilities. 
So I'll provide all these links. This really, this video is more information. I have made videos installing firmware, updating firmware, and I think I'll update my H2 now because my H4M hasn't arrived yet. And then once I get the H4M, I'll go through all the different functions, just like I did with the H2 as I learn. And um, yeah, thanks very much for everyone. I've watched several videos from people learning about this. And you know, with a device like this, and really with any, you know, I've just got the top of a new radio that's just come out by Bajaton and Radtel, shack in the box type radio, and you you know you can't learn it. You can't just buy it because click 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 is uh, easy. Click click, it's zero effort. Yeah, but learning how a device works and learning how to use it—that's hard work. Yeah, and if you really want to use these things, then you know take a deep breath and get stuck in, and and then you can actually build your confidence and enjoy using these devices. Bye for now. Seven three.